My Twitch chat has been telling me for a while to start making rant videos where I just pick a topic and talk about it. Since I've played so much Stardew, I kind of just have a bunch of random info laying around and I don't talk about it all too much off of stream. So today, I'm going to be adding to the abundant of fishing guides already out there for Stardew Valley. While everybody has done a great job explaining everything there is to know about the fish themselves, you go into detail about how the minigame works and tips on how to get better at it. That aren't just the basic level, oh, just level up your fishing skill to get a bigger green bar, and use the trap bobber for harder fish. This does help most people catching the tougher fish, but it can still be a pain. I could just jump in and tell you all the tips and tricks I use during the fishing minigame, but some come before even casting the line. Location matters. Duh. But why does it matter? There is a hidden water depth mechanic that determines the quality and types of fish you can get. While it may look obvious on what parts are deep due to the water color, but in fact the water color has nothing to do with the water depth of the tile. The water depth of the tile is based off of the number of tiles away from the land it is. The change in color indicates a different tile, but the water color itself means nothing. I'm about to ruin a lot of people's day, but the biggest offender of this is the lonely rock you see out in the ocean. What I'm showing you now is the water depth charts made by Blade that can be found on the wiki showing tile water depth. And as you can see, even though the water color is darker next to the lonely rock, it still is the same quality as the water around it. The rock itself does nothing to the fish you are catching. It does absolutely nothing other than being an in-game sprite that looks cool and uh, is a little lonely. So maybe you do just fish there to give it some love. There's no code in the game that makes that rock a better fishing spot than let's say the bottom of the dock. The next part to know about location is bubbles. Those funny little water spots you see every now and again are invaluable when it comes to fishing, especially in the early game. When you're just starting out and you only have the bamboo or trading rod, fishing can be a real slog. But with bubbles, fish bite four times as fast, making the maximum waiting time from 30 seconds down to just 7.5. They also have a hidden benefit of increasing the water depth of the tile they're on by one. So even if the bubbles are closer to shore and in a lower fishing depth, they are slightly higher and you'll just be getting more fish on average, so it's beyond worth using. An extra tip for whenever you come across bubbles that look unreachable, you can use your directional keys when casting a line to move the bobber placement up to one tile. So if the bubble is just like one tile to the right of where you can stand to reach it, just hold down the D key when you're casting it and then it should work. You should be able to reach it. The last thing I want to talk about before we get into the main game, we got to talk rods. Stop staring. There are four different types of fishing rods in the game. You are given the bamboo rod from Willy when you first meet him. And the remaining three are purchasable from Willy. Each of the rods all do unique things. Starting with a training rod, it is purchasable right away from Willy for 25G. It limits the difficulty of fish you can catch, but it locks your green bar size at level 5 fishing. While it can equip tackle, it does passively have the same effect that the trap bobber provides, which slows down the escape of fish when you're not catching them. The downside of the training rod is you can only catch lower difficulty fish. Specifically, fish with a difficulty lower than 50. I'll be going into more what this means later, but it's, it's just as it sounds. You can only catch easier fish, and that makes sense. It's a training rod after all. It's for, you know, raining. The next rod is the fiberglass fishing rod, which is bought from Willy after a player reaches fishing level 2 for 1800G. This rod just simply allows the player to equip bait. Bait is a very powerful tool, allowing the player to reduce waiting time for the fish by another 50%. The funny thing about the bait spot is no matter what type of bait is equipped in that spot, you'll get the 50% reduction to bite time. This is 62.5 if you have wild bait, but magnet bait and magic bait also have this 50% reduction. Other than that, the fiberglass fishing rod has no other effect on anything else that comes from the fishing minigame, what fish you get, everything. To dispel this common belief, the only rod that affects the green bar size is the training rod which sets your fishing level or which sets the bar size to fishing level five the green bar size is only increased by your fishing level and the cork bobber nothing else 
It also doesn't make you more likely to catch higher quality fish and more difficult fish over the bamboo rod. That is specifically from your fishing level and the water depth. Equipping bait does make it more likely for you to catch fish, but it is unique to the bait, not the rod itself. The iridium rod is similar to the fiberglass rod, but is bought from Willie for 7500 G when the player reaches fishing level 6. This rod does the same thing the fiberglass fishing rod does, but allows the player to equip tackles. Tackles are a very powerful tool for catching harder fish and shouldn't be underestimated. I don't want to go over every tackle as that's been beaten to death in other videos, but just note that for making harder fish easier, the only good option is the trap bobber. The rest have niche uses. Okay, with that info dump out of the way, time for the fun part, the mini game. Love it or hate it, the fishing mini game is needed to progress in Stardew Valley and hopefully I'm going to give you guys lessons to lessen the pain of those who hate it. For those who love it, hopefully you come out with a cool new trick you can use. The fishing mini game is a super simple premise. There's a fish that moves up and down a bar and you must keep the fish in the green area of the bar that you control. What's not so simple is accurately controlling said green bar to keep the fish that is constantly moving in it. Being able to precisely control the green bar is key to catching harder fish. To move the bar up, you must hold down your button of choice. As I only play on PC, my button of choice is my left mouse button, and I will be referring to it as such for the remainder of the video. When you hold down left click, the green bar rises, and when you release it, it drops. This is how you navigate the bar to chase the fish, but occasionally the fish stays still and you need to keep the bar in place. If holding down your button makes it rise and releasing it makes it fall, the only way to keep the bar in place is to rapidly tap it. It takes a bit of timing to keep it perfectly still, but you never need to hold it for that long. With the basic controls out of the way, I need to explain fish patterns. Fish work off of two attributes, difficulty and behavior. Difficulty is a side number that ranges between 15 and 110 that generalizes the fish's difficulty. If it has a higher number, it's generally harder. A fish's behavior can be one of four types. Next is a basic fish pattern where fish occasionally go up and down the bar. It's just the generic fish pattern that just moves around in a standard way. Smooth is a mixed fish pattern, but slower. It's really just the it's just the easiest fish behavior. Like if any fish is smooth, it's a, it's a simple catch. Sinkers have a fast downwards acceleration. So when it's going down or decides to go down, it will just be faster than normal. Floaters are the opposite as an upward faster upwards acceleration. So when it's going up, it goes faster. Darts are the hardest type of behavior. For darts, the fish will rapidly wiggle up and down but while at the same time having the mixed behavior where they go to select points on the bar. So not only having to fo follow the wiggle of the fish, but also the normal mix pattern makes this just the hardest behavior. With this, the game decides what the pattern of the fish will be. These patterns and difficulties are set to the fish and never change in value. That means you can memorize the patterns. While not every fish you catch will have the exact same pattern, they're pretty similar every time, and if you notice it enough, you'll be able to call what fish you have on the line before even catching it. For example, if I was fishing in the lake and caught a fish that just goes directly to the center and just sits there for the remainder of the pattern, I know it is going to most likely be a bullhead, because bullheads generally follow that pattern. Some fish share the same pattern, but are in different locations because both the shad and the walleye, which are river fish, do the exact same. If you really want to start learning patterns, but don't want to spend all day in Stardew just trying to do it, there's a fun little game called Preferdal, made by Sir Captos, Captopus, what a crazy name, where you have to guess what fish you have on the line. It also has a little bit of elements where you can guess, guess it based off of the location and stuff, just like Wordle, but it's a fun little game to see if you can just figure out what the fish is just based off of the catch alone. And just like in real life, information is a very powerful tool to have. If you know what the fish's habits are, you know where the fish is most likely going to go next, so you can play into that. So here's some of the more advanced tech. There's not much, again, the fishing minigame is very simple, so this is just more advanced movement stuff. But 
If you have ever had a fish that just goes all the way to the bottom of the bar and just sits there and is really annoying to get because when you try to make your green barber go to the bottom, it hits the bottom and bounces straight up. And it's like, how am I supposed to get this fish? Yeah, there's a really simple fix. It's called use your button of choice. Just tap it right before it hits the bottom and it will stop all downwards momentum and then your bar will just sit at the bottom. That's all you need to do. There is technically a bobber that lets that does this for you automatically, but why waste a bobber spot when you just have to do one well-timed left click? It's really simple once you get the pattern. You can even do it a little bit early if you're a little scared to get the timing perfect. It's very lenient, but very nice for those really annoying bottom beaters. The other tech that I needed to explain fishing patterns for to make sense is what we what I would call leading so if you know what is most likely going to occur next in the fish's pattern why would you center the green bar directly on the fish instead of leading it a little bit so another example of a really easy to spot fish is the eel the eel will immediately shoot up about 70% up the bar and just sit there and then after a little bit go down to like the bottom 20% and sit there again and eventually go up and this pattern repeats. So if you know it's going to go down next, why would you center the green bar or hell even just have the green bar at the top and just sit there when you can just slightly tap lower than it, have the, the fish sit in probably about the upper like 30% of your green bar. And then when it's about to start going down, you still have the extra reaction time to start dropping the bar quicker because it will still be in the green bar. And even if it launches out of the green bar, you're still catching it for that slight bit of time, allowing you to get more progress of the minigame done. And that can be life or death in a legendary situation. If you're trying to catch the legend and you think, oh, the fish is going to go down next, you get the little bit of extra leeway so you can maybe mess up here and there again and it'll be fine. But at the end of the day, all this really comes down to practice. Tips can only help you get so much better and practice as long as you're trying to improve on it is really the best way to learn. So again, thanks for listening to today's rant. I'll likely be posting more of these videos this year because I'm trying to post more videos more often and I'm occasionally gonna need filler for some of the bigger challenges that i would like to do anyways thanks for listening i hope it helped in some way have a great rest of your day and peace